Today, I have another bespoke custom video, the third in my 420 inspired line of 20 Jordan 4s. And I will be utilizing inspiration from the strain Jack Herrera to complete this project. In order to get started, I gotta remove the soles off of these Air Flight 89s. I start my sole separation process by pouring some acetone into the footbed of the shoe. After several minutes of letting the acetone sit, I pour in some boiling water and using some pressure from my hands in a bone folder, I start to pull the uppers off of the midsoles carefully as to not damage the midsoles. I was able to get the soles cleanly detached, but now I gotta clean off all the old factory glue. I'll break out my Dremel and we'll clear off all of the old junk from the soles. I started my sole preparation utilizing a grinding bit to help to take off some of the factory glue from the midsoles and outsoles. Then I broke out the acetone and cotton balls to remove any remaining glue and debris and also to remove the burgundy paint from the midsoles. After removing the burgundy paint, it was time to tape off the midsoles so I could repaint these things to a color of my choosing. For this project, I utilized blue turquoise paint by Angelus and I airbrushed the first couple of layers before hand painting one layer of paint to fill in all deeper pores. I finished off using an airbrush and after I was done airbrushing, I broke out a toothbrush. I utilized the toothbrush to create a splatter effect with some neon purple and neon pink paint so I had this nice speckled midsole. After I had applied my neon paint, it was time to get on some matte forecoat to give this thing a nice matte finish that was also well protected from scratches. Once my finisher was applied, I removed all of the tape to reveal the midsole repaint I had just completed. So I am officially over at San Diego Custom Footwear Studio right now, and I have picked out the colors that I'll be using for these builds, and I picked out the materials. And right here, the Jack Herrera inspired Jordan 4s. I got all my materials over here, set off to the side, so then that way when I get in tomorrow, I'll be ready to go right off the rip. Cannot wait to make this pair of kicks. It's gonna be absolutely awesome, so stay tuned. Tomorrow morning, I'll be right at you. Yo guys, sneaker class just got started. All of the other students just got in. Let's take a quick look. You guys can see a little bit of behind the scenes action and then we'll get started with these projects. Being a San Diego custom footwear alumni, I was able to get a little bit of a behind the scenes look at the storage portion of the warehouse. After going up and checking out all of my supplies, I took a quick cruise around to the Fix Your Face Barber Shop, the San Diego custom footwear workshop, and all of the other little different sections of the warehouse that they had set up for all of your printing and customization needs. San Diego Custom Footwear's new warehouse was definitely coming together quite nicely and I couldn't wait to build this new project with all of the new setup. Absolutely dope so far. I need to start to get cutting because I got two pairs to make. Everybody else only got one pair to make. Let's get to work. Starting this project, I set aside all of my patterns from San Diego Custom Footwear and began tracing them out using some heat erasable pens. Once my patterns were traced, I started to use some leather scissors to help to cut everything up. This part of the process was especially hectic because I was doing my best to create two pairs of kicks in a four day span, so I had to work especially quickly to get my uppers liners and backings all cut out nice and quickly. So at this point in time, I've finished cutting my liner. I finished cutting all the pieces for the upper. Now I need to get into my backing and my skiving so I can get ready to start sewing things together. Once I had all of the pieces of my uppers cut out, I was able to assemble them in a fashion that actually resembled what these sneakers were about to look like. I started to apply all of my backing material to my uppers, so then that way I would be able to have a nice rigid and structured shoe once these things were all sewn together. Some of the backing material that I used was self-adhesive with pressure, but other backing that I used was heat activated and also required pressure. After getting all of my backing materials applied, 
I was able to start to assemble the wings. For these wings, I ended up using a rather stiff backing to give them some extra rigidity and structure because I knew that they were going to be freestanding on the sneakers. After getting the actual wings assembled, I applied my backing material to the lace tabs, got all of those cut out, and after trimming them down to get them nice and neat, I was able to apply some glue and get them all attached to one another. After getting them attached to one another, it was time to trim them down yet again to create some nice clean edges before I had to punch my lace holes. After punching dozens upon dozens of lace holes, it was time to get these lace tabs attached to the wings. And that's where I ended up calling it a day for the first set of work that I had on this pair of custom kicks. Day two, San Diego custom footwear class about to get started. I'm going to be getting to skiving and sewing. Very important that I stay on top of my game because I got to get shit done quickly, but I also got to make sure that I get things done well. I started day two by skiving my uppers with a razor blade so that way when it came time to stitch I would get some nice clean seam lines. After finishing with my skiving it was time to start attaching different pieces of the uppers that were about to be sewn together using some double sided tape. After getting everything taped in place it was time to get to stitching. It had been a long time since I had last been on a sewing machine, and at first it felt especially unfamiliar to me. But after practicing for a little while, I was able to get back into the groove of things, and I was able to get some pretty nice clean lines as I continued to work through the uppers. I followed my patterns from San Diego Custom Footwear, and after just a little while, I had a nice structure coming together and this pair of kicks was finally starting to come to life. Day two had come to a close. Day three, San Diego custom footwear. The shoes are coming together. They're looking really good at this point in time. Today I'm gonna to be closing up the shoes, adding my liners, adding my internal foams, and I'm going to be starting the lasting process. Day three was an absolute whirlwind, and unfortunately, I didn't get as much footage as I would have liked. I started by closing up the shoes, and after closing the shoes, it was time to stitch up the tongue. After getting the upper half of the tongue liner stitched on, I added in the tongue foam, and then stitched together the bottom half. I attached the tongue to the uppers, and attached the liner to the uppers before I punched all of the lace holes. Finally, I closed the uppers completely by sewing in the liner, and at this point in time, I effectively had a shoe hat before going on to day four. Unfortunately, day four was almost as much of a whirlwind as day three was, and I was hardly able to get any footage. I started off by lasting the uppers to my lasting board, which I completely forgot to film, but I was able to catch the tail end where I glued down the excess material to the lasting board, and after doing that, removing all of the lasting nails from the last, so I was able to hammer down my excess material and skive it off to get it prepared for a reglue. After skiving down all of the excess material from the uppers, I traced out my soles on the uppers and broke out the Dremel so I could sand down any sections that were going to be glued to the soles. After sanding, it was time to apply my glue to both the uppers and the soles. After getting everything heated with the help of Ray Marquez, owner of San Diego Custom Footwear, we were able to get these uppers bonded to the midsoles and then get the shoes off of the last. Ray also helped to stitch the toe caps together and then it was finally time to throw some laces on these bad boys and call it a day because this pair was finally finished. Now that these Jack Herrera Jordan 4 Customs are complete, let's take a closer look so you guys can see the final product. 
Obviously, these shoes are by no means perfect, but for this being the third pair of kicks that I've ever made, I think that they came out pretty damn good. The shape is a lot better than it was on the first pair of Jordan 4s that I ever made, although the right shoe is definitely a bit more off. My stitching isn't perfect. It definitely got a lot better than I've had it in the past, and doing the double stitching means that I had more practice for future projects to get even cleaner line work. There are a few spots where I over glued on, but I think that if I pull out the glue eraser, I'll be able to get off a whole bunch of that excess and make things look a little bit cleaner overall. This pair of kicks was a really good learning experience for me, and there are quite a few things that I intend to carry over with me the next time that I create a custom sneaker from the ground up. Even though this pair of custom Jordan 4s didn't come out perfect, I'm really excited with the final product. Hopefully, you guys were able to learn a little bit about the process of making a sneaker, and I can't wait to show you guys some of the future projects that I have in store. Thank you to everybody that tuned into this video, and especially all of you guys that stuck around until the cold, bitter end. You guys already know that I'm Sailboat, and I'm out of here.